All right, welcome back everyone. My name is Pratesh here with Kaizen Crypto, bringing you another video. So today I have the unique opportunity of being joined by my friend Shweta, who is the stake pool operator for KBlox. She's the first female stake pool operator on the Shelly mainnet. So really excited to be joined by her. Shweta, how are you doing today? Uh, thank you so much for having me here. I'm doing great because I just minted my first blog. I couldn't be happier. Oh, congratulations. That's so exciting. Thank you. Very so much. cool. What are you doing to celebrate? I haven't planned it out at all because <laughs> I, until now I was just refreshing my system, checking all the performance that if everything is on track, what's the issue that I'm not minting a uh, blog? doubting myself so there was a lot of stress going on but i'm so glad that it finally happened uh, i'll figure out a way to celebrate it very soon that's awesome that's awesome mm -hmm. i know it's like if you're anticipating that block it can be a little you know you can get a little nervous there but uh that's exciting that's very good news so shweta i just wanted to say thank you so much for coming on to the show i know we wanted to talk a little bit about uh, women in blockchain um, so you're doing something incredibly special by first being the first female stake pool operator on the Shelly mainnet. Um, and you also wanted to kind of bring some light to the topic of how we can get more women into this space. Um, so why don't you go ahead and start, if you can, go ahead and tell us a little bit about your background. Sure. Um, so I come from a small town of India called Jhansi. It's in Northern India. And uh, I, I always question society norms. So that's what made me from just a girl in small town from the, to the first female engineer in my family. And uh, now I'm working as a technology lead for Accenture. And currently I'm living in Denmark. Okay, very cool. So you've moved to Denmark because of your work and your yeah. family is in India? Yeah, right. So two years ago, I had this opportunity to work for the client I was assigned to in Accenture India. And then I moved to Denmark. And so far, it has been going amazing. I'm loving the country. Very, very different from India. I bet. I bet. I bet Denmark is a very beautiful place. Yes. Just as beautiful as India. Nice. You know, that's crazy. I'm also, my, my background, my family is originally from India. But I'm a little bit envious. I got to say, I've actually never been to India. And I was born okay. here in the States. So it's like, it's, uh, it's on my bucket list. Yeah, you should definitely plan a trip to India. Definitely, most definitely. Well, let's go ahead and talk about, let's see, what got you interested into Cardano? And, you know, as far as being able to spread the message about women in blockchain, um, I guess talk a little bit about that. What kind of piqued your interest um, and what made you want to get started? Yeah, so I heard about Bitcoin, which was the first crypto in uh, 2014. And uh, the way I heard about it was not very positive, as we all know. So I kind of stayed away from uh, crypto. But uh, in the start of this year, I heard, overheard a few colleagues of mine discussing about Cardano. And the thing that caught my attention was they referred to Cardano as the next Google of blockchain. And I was like, okay, this is interesting. I have to know about this. Then I went home, I researched, and I stumbled upon, upon Charles White vote video. And you know, after that, there is no going back. Yes, the rest is history. The rest is history. That's awesome. That's awesome. I know, I remember when I saw that video, I was like, you know, mind blown. It's just incredible. You're so driven. You want to change the society. Absolutely. Very, very yeah. And you know, from what we see right now, it's like there's so many systematic flaws that we're seeing with society. And mm -hmm. especially now, you know, we're, we're so fortunate to be able to talk face to face, even mm -hmm. though we're not in the same room, technology has brought us that ability. And, mm -hmm. and what we're seeing right now with things like COVID, I'm here in the US, we have protests, there's so many things going on. And yeah. I think blockchain and specifically Cardano, it's really going to fill that gap. So yeah. very cool. That's awesome to hear about. Um, so there are a few other women that are running stake pools. Yes. I really want to give them a shout out because they are the ones who have been working very close with each, with each other. So 
when we are in the community we do not feel like competitors at all we work together as a family so there is maria from ireland uh, basically she is from brazil and uh, she is running cardes uh, cardinistas street pool uh, <laughs> forgive my pronunciation <laughs> and uh, she, the reason uh, what makes her very special is that she is also the first female cardano ambassador and she's the only one wow very <laughs> and, interesting yeah then we have nicole um, from central america she is running the legend of ada we have uh, shweta from she's running key blocks she's also in us <laughs> oh so there's two shwetas okay yeah. <laughs> Very cool. So one is key blocks and one is K blocks. Yes. Nice. Then um, we have Amanda from Cordia. She's running Deadpool. <laughs> so cool. I saw that. <laughs> oh man, I'm I'm hoping she gets a lot of delegators for that. That's pretty There's funny. There's some Marvel fans definitely. <laughs> there you go. And we have one um, female street pool operator on the way. She is just about to hop on to mainnet. Uh, April uh, she is from Nigeria and she will be running Joy Pool very nice very nice well it's incredible to see what you're doing and kind of uh, leading the charge so to speak and trying to bring awareness to uh, getting more women involved in blockchain um, as far as doing something like that i mean what do you think that we can do as a community uh, to help maximize women participation Uh, yeah this is a very sensitive topic but i think i we should talk about it so let's dig a bit deeper and uh, i want to talk about why there are less women in blockchain so if you think about a uh, blockchain is all mainly technical um, there are other aspects to it to it too uh, which we cannot deny but if we have to catch maximum um participation at this stage it would come from technical field uh, so as we all know that in technical field women participation is quite low there are not even one fourth of the women that uh, they're in technology so that filters out the entry criteria at first place then on top of that there are other factors that are impacting women participation in the blockchain uh since it is a very new topic a lot of people do not know about it and when we as women we ask questions and if the questions are silly sometimes we get judged so that's not very comfortable to hear that you know you should know this by now and how come you are not aware of it it's such a silly question so we definitely should inculcate this mentality that there are no silly questions I completely agree. I think that having a sense of inclusiveness, especially when you're coming into something brand new, you know, nobody started out knowing everything about blockchain. Uh so really having that in the back of your mind, knowing that there are no silly questions. So I I agree with that. I uh, 100%. I think that is a big important thing for everybody to kind of consider as far as helping each other grow as a community. So Thanks so much for sharing that. Um I did also want to kind of tie into that and um how you are going to be able to help uh hopefully lead females through this blockchain space. You you mentioned that you had actually had a recent nomination for Spacra. Yeah. Could you uh could you tell us a little bit uh, what is Spacra and maybe like how would you be able to contribute being inside of that role? Uh, yeah, sure. so the i'll talk about what got me into it of course the frustration that there are very few women in this space and i just want to clarify this that we are not here asking for any special treatment or we do not want people to prefer merit prefer prefer gender over merit but we just want people to understand and acknowledge that this is an issue if you look at the stake pools that are there in our main net there are 1000 plus stake pools and if you count the number of female operators they are just four as of now so that clearly says so the participation is 0.5 less than 0.5% so that clearly says so much about the issue that is there so that really got me off guard that this is so insane and no one is talking about this so there should be some female 
leader or some female representative to speak about it to take care of that minority group. So that's why I nominated for Spokra. And uh, I, I couldn't believe I got a shout out from Charles too on the twi Twitter. Yes. And I was not able to sleep for two days after that. <laughs> that's, I'm sure that's an incredible feeling. <laughs> Couple that with minting your first block. Oh man. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's exciting. I, I really do wish you the best. And I'm sure that uh, the, the board at Spockerel will be uh, very, very lucky to have you uh, kind of leading that initiative. So wish you the best of luck with that. Um, I, I did want to just kind of leave the uh, floor open up to you. And, you know, if you did have any questions for our audience, or maybe like, how can uh, people support you? Like, how can they find out more about what you're trying to do? Yeah, so there is this uh, Telegram channel where we have all the female stakeholder operators and also the females who are curious about Cardano. Uh, that is at the rate Cardano women. So you can please feel free to join that group. It's a public group. You can join us whenever you want. And there are no silly questions in that forum. You can ask Absolutely. Whatever. I'll be sure to leave a link down in the description for you guys. Thank you so much. Yeah, and I do want to address this... Um, issue i wouldn't say that as an issue is this topic because lately i've been hearing comments that you know women just want equality how much equality how much more equality do they want is already 21st century and if you are a stake pool operator then there would not be any discrepancy in pay you would be get paid as equal to males so why are you uh, playing this woman card I really want to address this reason being we are not playing the women card. We want younger generation of women to look up to us and follow our footsteps and they want to enjoy Cardano as we are enjoying. But it has to start somewhere. And moreover, if the women participation is low in tech and then you would come out and say that, okay, uh, in tech already there are so less women. So it's bound that in blockchain industry, there would be less women. So that is not an excuse. <laughs> this is not an excuse that we should give to ourselves and then just ignore the topic. We have to acknowledge it and then we need to support it because if we want that Cardano would become a household work, it would not happen without half of the population. That's exactly right. You know, as far as adoption, 50% of the population are women. Yes. You know, having, uh, having the ability to make it accessible and enjoyable for, for everyone, I think that's gonna be really incredible for everyone. So, well, very cool. Uh, Shweta, I really enjoyed hearing your thoughts as far as how women can participate in blockchain. Um, huge congratulations to you again for minting your first block. Uh, that's, ex that's very exciting and uh, very happy for you. Many more to come. Um, and I do hope that we can do this again sometime very soon. Yeah, I have another non-women related topic that I want to talk about if it's, it is fine. Yeah, sure. Okay. The stage so, is yours. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, so currently we, as you must be knowing that um, there are around six stake pools that control almost 50% of the delegated ADA in the market. So uh, I did a lot of thinking about it and I feel that it is not fair to the smaller pools to have that many huge players in the market because they are losing out on the ADA. But at the same time, I feel there should be a system to make decentralization a real possibility. Because what happened with Bitcoin, we do not want it to happen to Cardano. So I, my suggestion is that we do some uh, sort of condition application on during pool registration that if single entity is um, having more than X amount of uh, pools, then they would have diminishing rewards uh, over a period of time, or we could limit the number of stake pools created by a single entity, because this is the true decentralization we are looking at. That's a great point. And, you know, we're seeing so many uh, ADA concentrations to a select group of pools. 
So, and how does that tie into something like Bitcoin, you know, with the mining pools and the mining operations, is Bitcoin really that decentralized? So that's a great topic to, uh, to discuss further. So I'm glad that you mentioned that. Um, I would ask if anybody would like to go ahead and reach out to Shweta directly, I will go ahead and leave her Telegram link down in the description. If you enjoyed this video here today, guys, please be sure to drop a like. Go ahead and let us know any comments that you have down in the comments section. And I look forward to seeing you all in the next video. Shweta, thank you so much. Thank you so much, Ritesh. Have a nice day. Take care. Bye-bye.